Luke chapter 5, the Gospel of Luke chapter 5, we'll begin in verse 12. We're looking at a short section of scripture this morning, but an incredibly powerful few verses. I've entitled the sermon this morning, Jesus Heals a Desperate Man. Jesus Heals a Desperate Man. And part of the reason that this account of Jesus healing a leper, part of the reason that it is so powerful is because of the plight of this man and what he was experiencing and what he had to deal with. And the way that we will fully appreciate what happens here is by looking at what Scripture tells us about one who had leprosy. I need to sneeze, but you know, it's funny when you're preaching. Like, you don't need to cough or sneeze until you get into the pulpit. Okay, I think it passed. All right, so Luke chapter 5, verse 12 Jesus has called his first disciples. He's been healing many people. Word has been spreading about how he has been able to heal so many people. And the people who would have been the most desperate and the very sickest were lepers. When we read verse 12, the way that Luke writes it, he writes it so that we would immediately have compassion and pity upon this man. While he, while Jesus, was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and he begged him, Lord, if you will... You can make me clean. It doesn't tell us what city Jesus was in. It was one of the ten cities called the Decapolis, which in Greek means ten cities, surrounding the Sea of Galilee. And so in one of these cities, Jesus is there in the city, and there comes to him a man full of, of leprosy. A couple things that you need to understand here that Luke's readers would have immediately known because they knew the laws about leprosy in this time. Number one, a leper is an outcast. He is never to come into the city. He is never to go around other people. The rabbis literally had taught people that if a leper tries to come into the city, that you are to pick up stones and throw them at them to keep them away. They were not to come within a hundred feet downwind of any other person. You think it was bad during COVID? You know, the people who first were diagnosed with COVID, you know, like March... April 2020, like when it first started happening, people were like, oh, did you hear so-and-so has COVID? Yeah, how long do you think they have? You know, um, I know many people died with COVID, but most got better, thankfully, mercifully. But, but I remember when the first people were diagnosed and you heard of like the first person that you actually knew. I, I remember the newspaper would say like, there's one case in this parish. And we were like, oh no! And then you'd find out someone you knew and you were like, oh my goodness. And you realize how serious it could be. And for some it, it was life altering or even fatal. And for others they didn't get that sick and we could not understand. But let me just tell you something. Leprosy was not that way. You got leprosy, it was a death sentence. And it was a painful one. Now, in the Bible, the word lepta, the, the, the word here... Uh, translated leprosy, is it doesn't necessarily mean the absolute worst form of leprosy. It was any kind of debilitating skin disease that would cause sores. But this man clearly had leprosy of, of a very terrible kind. The worst type of leprosy is what we generally today call leprosy, 
in the English-speaking world, and that is what is known as Hansen's disease. This is the, the worst type. It may be what this man had. Uh, Hansen's disease, um, you literally, your, your, your fingers and your toes will begin to rot off, and those who have advanced Hansen's disease, they lose their hands and their feet, their lips will rot away so that their teeth are always exposed. Their eyelids will begin to rot so that they cannot even close their eyes. Their, their, their skin literally decays on their body and eventually it takes their life. Their skin will just come off. It's very fragile and, and even, even a light amount of pressure can just pull the skin off of their body. Their, 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 their skin literally rots in place. It's horrible. It was a terrible way to die. This man had something like that. Notice how Luke describes him in verse 12. He was a man full of leprosy, meaning this was a bad case of leprosy. There were lepers who would not be as terribly progressed or would have a form of this skin disease or, or maybe a different skin disease which was also called leprosy that wouldn't be quite as severe, but this man's case was severe. That is what Luke indicates here. So as I said, he, he was never to come into society. He would have had to stay at least 100 feet away from anyone downwind of him. People would have been taught to get very angry and throw stones at this man if he came anywhere close to them. Also, you need to understand that in Jewish society at this time, people had the wrong idea that if you had a terrible disease and leprosy was among the very worst of diseases that you could have, if you had a terrible disease, people at this time would assume that it was because you had committed some grievous sin and God had punished you with this disease. This is the reason why in John chapter 9, verse 1, uh, Jesus and his disciples walk by and they see a man who had been blind from birth and they ask Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? See, this man had been blind from birth and so Jesus' disciples thought, well, maybe, maybe his parents caused their son to be blind. They just assumed that if anyone had a, a, a serious disability or illness, that it was because of sin, specific sin in their life. But they were wrong. Jesus said neither this man nor his parents sinned that he was born this way. He was born this way so that the glory of God might be revealed through him. Powerful, by the way. That, that Jesus is actually those who have terrible illness or a disability... God shows his glory through them. Well, that's a different way to think of it, isn't it? They, they truly are special. God has a, a greater purpose for them. That's what Jesus said. That's incredible. But that's not the way the Jews at this time thought. So they would have seen a leper and, and they would have said, <laughs> he, God would not have given him leprosy unless he had done something really wrong. So it's his fault, and so it's not wrong to throw rocks at him to keep him away from me. They knew leprosy was contagious. And that's why they had to, lepers had to stay away, but the people would have also assumed that the leper was a particularly wicked person. Otherwise, God would have protected him from getting leprosy. So when it says in verse 12 that Jesus was in one of the cities and there came up to Jesus a man full of leprosy, Luke expects us to immediately realize that this man is breaking all kinds of rules. This man is not supposed to come into the city and he's definitely not supposed to walk up to Jesus. This man would have been stoned to death for what he was doing. He was supposed to stay far out of anyone else's sight and he could only go around other lepers like himself. Never to come back into society again. 
But he's desperate. And he risks his own life. And what did he have to lose? He had a fatal illness anyways. And I don't know if he had lost fingers or toes at this point. I don't know if he had lost hands. He apparently was able to walk, so he must have still had feet. But he knew that he would lose them if something didn't happen. And he heard that this man, Jesus, is able to heal the sick. And this man has leprosy, one of the worst illnesses you could possibly get. And this man believes that Jesus is able to heal him. Matter of fact, he'll say, if you're, you're willing, you're able to make me clean. Now this is, this is interesting. Because if you read in the Old Testament, you know everybody's favorite book, Leviticus, chapters 13 and 14 you will see extensive laws about leprosy. You, you will see many verses upon verses explaining what leprosy is and how it is to be dealt with and how lepers had to be quarantined from everyone else because it's contagious. Now, now the things about throwing rocks at lepers, God did not permit that. The Jews added that later. But God did say that lepers had to stay away so as not to infect other people. And what you will see is that these people lived a terribly, not only physically painful, but an emotionally painful and beleaguered existence. So when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and he begged him to make him clean. You see, in Leviticus 13 and 14, we're told that when a leper would get better, and sometimes some forms of leprosy, people would get better. It didn't happen often, by the way. But if someone did get better, it was said that they had been made clean. Not merely that they had been healed, but they had been made clean. Because leprosy was a particularly disgusting. Your skin would rot on your flesh. You, you realize you were a walking, rotting corpse. You smelt like a dead animal all the time, and you could not help it. So that if a leper were healed... He was made clean, meaning that before that, he was filthy. Powerful, powerful metaphor. And I want to read for you from Luke chapter, thir excuse me, Leviticus chapter 13. Just two verses here, verses 45 and 46. Now look, there are more than a hundred verses in Luke 13 and 14 about laws concerning lepers. But I just want to read two of those verses because I think these are the most revealing. Leviticus 13 verse 45 says, The leprous person who has the disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head hang loose. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! So as to warn anyone who might get near him, I am unclean. Don't come close to me. You don't want to catch this. Imagine. He was required by law to wear torn clothes. He was to look disheveled and unkempt. His hair was to be long and, and loose and tattered and just a mess. And he was to cover his upper lip, both probably to cover his breath, which might carry the disease, but also the fact that lepers often had their lips rot off of their face so that their teeth and gums would be exposed. So that people wouldn't have to see how hideous they looked. And he would have to say, unclean, unclean, don't come close to me. 
and he shall remain unclean. He shall live this way. He shall not come near anyone. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling place shall be outside the camp. Can you imagine? You can never see your wife again. You can never see your children again. You can never see your parents again. Anyone you love and you know, you can never see them again. And if they try to come and see you, you are to cover your face and say to them and warn them, I'm unclean. Don't come near me. Imagine that you woke up tomorrow with leprosy, knowing that would be the rest of your life. It's terrifying. And this man was living it. He could never see his loved ones again. He could never hug his children again. He's unclean. And so he hears that Jesus is able to heal sick people. And he believes it. And he has everything against him, but nothing to lose. Because he's going to die anyways. And so if they stone him to death for going into the city, so be it. Maybe that'll be less painful than all of his flesh rotting off his body. He goes into the city, breaking every law, and he finds Jesus, and he goes up to him, Though he was not to go near him, he goes up to him and he falls on his face. And it literally says he fell on his face. He put his face into the dirt is what that means. He fell on his face. And with his face in the dirt, he begged Jesus. He pleaded. This, this word means to make an impassioned plea or cry for help. He begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Now look at his plea. First, he calls him Lord. I've already explained to you. This word, Lord, kurios, is the name of God. You called Lord the one who created the heavens and the earth. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. The Lord is Yahweh. That's the Hebrew word. Kurios is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew Yahweh. It's the name of God. This man calls Jesus Lord. He calls him God, Creator. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He does not say, if I will. He does not say, if any other person will. He says, Lord, if you will. He recognizes that only Jesus can help him. And he recognizes... That it's not ultimately up to me, but it's up to Jesus to make me clean. He doesn't say, Lord, I will. He says, Lord, if you will. He is totally at the mercy of the Lord Jesus. And then he says, if you will, you're able to make me clean. Literally, you have the power to make me clean. He believes since Jesus is God and creator, he has the power and authority over leprosy to make him clean and totally rid his body of leprosy. Brothers and sisters, 
I think because of the language that Luke uses here, which is parallel in the rest of his gospel and in the book of Acts, which Luke also wrote, I think that Luke is intentionally paralleling the plight of the leper here to the plight of the lost person when they call upon Jesus for salvation. You will notice throughout the rest of Luke's gospel in the book of Acts that similar language is used of the lost sinner who comes to Christ for salvation. You will notice later in the temple, you'll, you'll see the, the, the publican, the rich man, and, and then you'll see the beggar. One says, well, I thank God that I'm not like other men. And, and the beggar goes into the temple and he says, God, he pleads, he cries out. Same words are used. God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Throughout Luke's gospel, the person who speaks the way the leper does here in crying out for Jesus to make him clean and rid his body of leprosy will be paralleled to the sinner who cries out to Jesus to save him from their sins. And Luke uses this same language to speak of the leper and the sinner on purpose because what Luke is going to do in the rest of his gospel is he's going to compare the plight of the sinner to the plight of the leper. Think about it. Banished outside the city. Unable to come back in. Unable to be made clean unless the Lord Jesus cleanses you. Do you know in Luke 13 and 14 what had to be done if you had been made clean, if you had leprosy no longer, do you know what had to be done before you could go back into society? A lamb would have to be sacrificed and then you could be brought back in. It's another one of the ways that I believe that God foreshadows what Christ did for us on the cross. The entire sacrificial system of the Old Covenant pointed to the cross of Calvary. And the only way the leper could come back in is if a lamb's blood was shed for that leper and then he could come back into the city. He'd present himself to the priest. The priest would sacrifice a lamb on his behalf and he could go back into the city. In the same way, the sinner can only be made clean if the Lamb of God and His blood is spilt on our behalf and Jesus makes us clean. I don't think it's a coincidence that Luke will use the same language that he uses of the leper here for every other sinner throughout the rest of the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. If you will, you can make me clean. Brothers and sisters, salvation is not in my hands. It's not in your hands. It's in the hands of King Jesus alone. Preachers cannot save you. Your parents cannot save you. Only Jesus can save you. And when the man cries out, Lord Jesus, if you will, you can make me clean. He's saying, you're my only hope. And I can't do this just because I want it. I need you to want me to be clean and then to cleanse me. You understand? Salvation begins, is carried out by, and ends with Jesus. Salvation is not something we do. It is something that Jesus does for us and gives to us as a gift. Or as the Apostle Paul says, salvation is by grace through faith. And this, grace through faith, is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It is not of works, lest anyone should boast. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. Lord, if you will... If you will, you can make me clean. Now look at the response of the Savior in verse 13. And Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched him. Does anyone know what that means under Levitical law? 
If you touch a leper, guess what? You now have to live the life of the leper. You get to join him now. Now you have to go outside the city and you can't go around anyone else because you probably caught his leprosy. You, can you imagine what the disciples and the crowd standing around Jesus would have done when Jesus reached out? The leper's laying on the ground in front of him and he reaches out and he touches him. They said, oh no, Jesus is going to be a leper now too. This is incredible. He stretched out his hand and he touched him and he said, I will, I am willing, be clean. And he commanded and it stood firm, as the psalmist says. God commanded the leprosy out of the man because he is the creator of the heavens and the earth and Jesus is able to command the leprosy to vanish. I will be clean. And immediately, not after a period of time, you remember the story of Elisha, and the healing of Naaman the Syrian in 2 Samuel chapter 7. You'll, you'll remember that he had to go and wash seven times in the Jordan River. Jesus is greater than Elisha. He commanded and boom, immediately. The man who had just a second prior had his flesh rotting on his body. Didn't have a single scar. He was perfectly clean. Can you imagine? Can, can, can you imagine the shock of anyone who saw that? Immediately the leprosy left him. He was clean. Like he had never had leprosy to begin with. Verse 14, And Jesus charged him to tell no one, but to go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded for a proof to them. By the way, Luke is citing Leviticus chapters 13 and 14. I told you, you need to go home and read Leviticus. It's important. So go do what Leviticus 13 and 14 prescribe which is that go show yourself to the priest, make an offering for your cleansing. That's the lamb that would have to be sacrificed so that he could go back into society. As Moses commanded, for a proof to them that you're no longer a leper. You've been made clean by the Lamb of God. That's interesting. In verse 14, he charged him to tell no one. Mark says in his gospel... Jesus charged the leper to tell no one, but then he went and told everybody. <laughs> he couldn't help himself. He's like, you're not going to believe this. I'm clean, and this man, Jesus, healed me, and he is God. And not only did he heal me, but he's my Savior, and I believe in him. And he couldn't help but tell other people. Now, why did Jesus tell him not to tell others? Well, Mark and Matthew both tell you in their gospel because his time had not yet come. Because, listen, when the word about Jesus spreads about who he is, they will crucify him. And Jesus' time to be crucified had not yet come. He had more ministry to do before he would go to the cross. And he had enough crowds surrounding him anyways. That, that's what we see next. Verse 15, but now even more the report about him went abroad. You just couldn't keep this news suppressed. I'm sure some people saw this. He was in the middle of the city when it happened. And then the man had to go and tell the priests. And Matthew and Mark tell us that he started telling people what had happened, even though Jesus asked him not to. The man was too joyful. He just couldn't help himself. So even more, the report about Jesus went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him and to be healed of their infirmities. And I think it's fair to say 
that by the time Jesus got done in his ministry around the region of Galilee in the first year of his ministry, there was almost no sick person left in these ten cities. That the entire region of northern Israel had been healed. I don't know if there were any more lepers by the time Jesus was done. John tells us at the end of his gospel, look, if I told you the story about every person that Jesus ever healed, the whole world would not be able to contain all the books. There's not enough bookshelves in the world. So we, we are told that, that, that Jesus healed far more people than the four gospels tell us about. They just picked some of the most important accounts of healing. But this is not the only leper he healed. He healed many. So we're just told here in verse 15 that, that great crowds came. And this would mean thousands and tens of thousands of people. We know it was that many because later Jesus heals five, uh, he feeds 5,000 men plus their wives and children, which would have been tens of thousands of people. And these are the great crowds. So tens of thousands of people come out and Jesus heals all the sick people in the crowd. Now, if you go into a city with tens of thousands of people, how many of those people in that city have an illness? Quite a few. There would be hundreds. And we're told here Jesus healed all of them. All the people who came out, he, he healed them. I mean, I don't know what the doctors did after Jesus' first year of ministry in the region of Galilee. I guess they had to move somewhere else because they were out of business. It's incredible. Not only did they come to be healed, but they gathered to hear him. Because remember, Jesus was primarily in the business of preaching the gospel. Yes, he healed people, but his main purpose was to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He said in that synagogue in Nazareth, he said in chapter 4, I have come to proclaim liberty to the captives. Salvation to sinners. Those who are slaves of sin. He who sins is a slave of sin. But if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus said, the first thing that I've come to do is to proclaim liberty to the captives. Then to give sight to the blind and to heal lepers. And to cause the mute to speak and the deaf to hear. But what did he come to do first and foremost? To save sinners to set at liberty those who have been held captive in the chains of their sin the main thing that Jesus came to do is to preach the gospel and to save souls he healed people to demonstrate that he was who he claimed to be he is God and he has all authority in heaven and on earth but the main point is not that you need to be healed of leprosy or any sickness, but you need to be saved from your sin. You need to be made clean, not just physically, but most importantly, spiritually. You need the Lamb of God to take away the guilt and the stain of your sin because we all come into this world unclean and we need Jesus to heal us spiritually first and foremost and make us clean so that we can spend eternity in His presence. And then I love verse 16. It's particularly convicting to me. But he would withdraw. He would get away from the crowds and go into the desolate places, the wilderness, the desert, and pray. You know, I've got to be honest, being a preacher, we want the crowds at least when we gather for a worship service. I'm thrilled when the pews are full. But Jesus, even the Son of God, needed to get away and pray. And listen, if the creator of the heavens and the earth needed to get away and have time alone with his Father in prayer, if Jesus 
the all-powerful creator of the heavens and the earth needed to do that, then how much more do we, who are so weak, need to do that? Man, this convicts me. Because even Jesus needed to spend time in prayer. And he wasn't praying for like two minutes. Because if he was going to pray for just a few minutes, he wouldn't go way out into the wilderness, which would have probably taken hours. Numerous times... In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we're told that Jesus would go out into the wilderness and he just prayed all night long. He needed time in prayer more than he needed sleep. And so some nights he would stay awake all night and pray. It's incredible. Listen, Jesus got sleepy too. He was a real man. If he stayed awake all night and prayed, he would have been just as sleepy as you and I the next morning. But sometimes he needed so desperately to spend time in prayer with his father that that's what he did. He gave up a night of sleep so that he could have a night of prayer. And I'm just going to be honest with you, I don't pray like Jesus, but I ought to. we got a long way to go. I, I, I look at the example of Christ and I realize how far I fall short. I don't even come close to this. If I spend an hour in prayer, which, which I often do, I feel like I've really done something. And, and it is incredible to spend long periods of time in prayer. And spiritually, it is, it, it is truly a, a rich blessing. And, and feeds my soul. But i got to tell you, <laughs> I don't pray like Jesus. Not even close. I've never gave up a night of sleep so that I could have a night of prayer. And though Jesus got just as sleepy, he did. Because he understood things that you and I don't understand. Brothers and sisters... Jesus can make you clean. The Lamb of God stepped down from His throne in heaven, came to this earth, lived a perfect sinless life on your behalf, and He died upon the cross of Calvary to pay for every one of your sins, and He offers to make you clean. The leper said, Lord, if if you will, I'll be made clean. Now here's the good news. Jesus wills. You can be made clean. Come to him, cry out to him the way that this leper did, and he will make you clean. Romans 10 verse 13 says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. There's not one person who comes to Jesus the way that this leper did whom Jesus will turn away. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord for cleansing and salvation, will be made clean and will be saved. So all you need to do is call upon His name and say, Lord, make me clean. And He will make you clean and give you eternal life. Let's pray. Father, I come before you in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I ask that anyone here who does not know Christ, who has not called upon Jesus to make them clean. God, I ask you. Lord, be willing. Make them clean. Grant them faith, open their eyes, change their hearts, and save them by your power and for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for those of us who are former spiritual lepers who have been made clean by the blood of Jesus. God, it's incredible. We, we think of the plight of this man in this in this account, this leper whom Jesus cleansed, and yet, Lord, the truth is, is we, in our lost condition, we're in a far worse state than him. 
And there are so many in this world today who are in that same lost spiritual condition. And they pity the leper when the truth is this leper would pity them. They don't even see it. They don't even know it. And they don't even understand how serious their sin is and what awaits them if they do not come to Christ. Lord, grant sight to the spiritually blind. Open the ears of those who have not yet been willing to hear the gospel. Be willing and make them clean. Save souls for your kingdom and for your glory. And make them willing to come forward and make that faith known. We ask these things in the name of our Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, King Jesus, we pray. Amen.